Hey y'all, it's Spiritual Life Coach 43 and I'm here to give you life coaching session number 23 and the topic is how families can get along with each other and I'm just going to jump right in. So this is such an important topic. My cards are a little bit big so I'm sorry if you guys can't see them. Hopefully you guys take heed to the message. That's what's most important. We're at a time, and, and it's Easter coming up in just a few days on Sunday. And I just want to wish everybody a happy Easter. And I know as families come together, those who celebrate, and for those who don't celebrate, um, we all have a family. Whether it's a family you created with your friends, people you're blood related to, family time and families are so important. We learn a lot about others and we learn a lot about ourselves and your culture, your history, your race, your religion, rules, you know, ethical codes. You learn so much in a family structure. You learn about life before you get to the outside world. You learn about people, people around you, people near to you. And we all have a family. And so when God led me to this, to this title, to this topic, I knew it was significant. All of my life coaching sessions are, but this one took me a little bit longer to write, at least for the last four cards. Now it's not in, in order. It's not in any order. Um, usually I do have a numbered order, but I don't have an order this time, but it's so important that people recognize the shift in this world when it comes to love, when it comes to family love, and even with perfect strangers in the community, how we treat each other. The disrespect for life in this world right now is high, and it's disheartening, it's sad, it's troublesome. I feel like we're in a time where God is showing the agents of him, the true children of God, and the people who chose to be an agent of the devil. All that in between is starting to fade out. We're going to see right from wrong. And it's going to start with family structure. People have got to break generational toxic cycles. And implement better strategies and more love and care into the youth and into each other. No more mask. No more of the, you know, wolves and sheep clothing. None of that. All of that is being removed. Everything is being exposed. It's going to come down to right versus wrong. And a lot of you can relate to this right now, you're seeing it in your own family structure, within your own families, your immediate family, your distant family, blended families, all families. People are truly out here losing it. This is why it's so important at all times to go God's way. At all times, not sometimes when we feel like it, when we're up or just when we're down, up, down, in between at all times. It's important and imperative to stay close to God and your spiritual team and to never lose sight that there is right and wrong. There is a blueprint called the Bible. There is a blueprint called the Ten Commandments, if we want to get more specific about rules. There is a right way to do things. None of us will ever be perfect, and all of us are sinners, and we all have things to repent for. But repenting requires change. Admitting something is not enough today. People can admit things all day long. It's about changing to be your best and highest, greatest self coming from the highest place of love. Families have got to learn to get along because I feel like the ones who don't are going to be left behind and removed because the people who are going towards God are going upward, onward, towards the light, towards blessings, to be earth angels and of God. 
true children of God act like it. At least most of the time. We all go through experiences that are traumatic, trauma, drama, divorces, curses, transitions, coping with different things, addictions. We all have problems. And we all are capable of solving our problems to the best of our ability. This world is coming down to who's going to do it and who's doing it. Not just saying it, but being about it, getting it done. God is watching, he is listening, and he is not playing. We are in a time of reaping what we sow. If you sow good seeds, expect an amazing, excellent harvest. If you didn't, you better repent and get it right. Karma goes both ways, good and bad. What you put out, you will get, and typically in folds, and not always the way you put it out there. It's usually worse, and it could last a lot longer. I feel God is very displeased with people who are going in the wrong, and I feel God is very happy and proud of the people who actually live to get it right with him every day. You know who the true stars is? The true angels of the world are. He knows. It is clear. And a lot, of, a lot of you were used as vessels to test and help expose who is who to God. Especially when people crossed you, God's children, or those who were getting it right. So understand this. There is a major change in this world. We're seeing who's who, and it's time. We're supposed to see. Everybody will not be going with you, and I know I've said this a lot of times. I will always say it. They cannot come with you if they didn't put the effort and the work in to go with you. Everybody has to walk their path, but we will all find out right now who is your tribe, who is of the light, who is for what's right, and who is not. There's going to be a lot of suffrage. I already feel it. But there's also going to be a lot of joy and happiness for those who've already suffered at the hands of the lost souls. And a lot of those souls chose to be lost. We have a choice to get it right. We have a choice to be good or evil. We have a choice. Our patterns, our actions, our behaviors, our tongue, the way we speak, the way we care for each other, all of that is taken into consideration. Always be the best person you can be. Repent to God. Forgive all people, including yourself. And strive to be your highest. Get there. Do it. How families can get along with each other. Life coaching session number 23. People definitely need to pray together and people need to go to church. And th this is clear as day to me. Prayer will always be in every life coaching session. It will be in every reading that I do because I'm a reader and I'm also a life coach. I do both. And I don't do as many life coaching sessions until I'm truly guided by God to do them. And I hope this truly helps someone. We have to pray. We have to mean it. But prayer also comes with action, just like when somebody apologizes for something that they did wrong. That has to come with changed behavior. That action has to go hand in hand. We have to go to church with a heart to be great, to be good, to do right, to be better, to do better, to truly love God and our families. A family needs house rules so people know what's expected they know what rewards are but they also know what consequences are for bad behavior but there's a lot of blessings for good behavior as well people need to know what's acceptable what is okay and what's not families should have family meetings people have to talk to each other they have to learn to address issues and everybody deserves to be heard everybody has a voice everybody has an opinion 
everybody's voice matters. Everybody's thoughts matter and emotions matter. People have to check in and do an energy check in. How are you doing today? No, how are you really feeling? What's really going on? We have to communicate better. And talk about trips and talk about plans and, you know, friendships and teachers and love interests. We have to talk to each other. And we have to respect the communication. People have to have meetings to know what's going on. Family should definitely have family togetherness activities. There's some incredible team building skills out there. All type of like um, activities that families can do if you guys just research them. Like scavenger hunts. You guys can make one at the house or, you know, build teamwork. Okay. Do some building. Go on trips. Go on vacations. Work together. Get chores done. And inform each other about your schedules, about what's happening, what's coming up. Okay, make some copies. Make sure everybody's informed so that nobody's event get missed or looked over or forgotten. Because it can happen because we all get busy. But family is important and family is a priority. And as a priority, that's a high priority. We have to make sure that everybody's included. Everybody feels special and supported. We have to love and support each other. And here's communicate. Like I said, we have to talk about our anger, about our joy, about our thoughts, our feelings, our mistakes. Sentence starters would be great for family members, especially for those who struggle with getting their emotions out. So a sentence starts like, I don't like when you do this. Or a sentence starts could be like, I feel like this. Or this is how I think. Or this is what I feel when you do this. Sentence starters would be great. It's a great way to help people communicate. There needs to be compassion for everyone's development. People are on different stages, different phases. There's a lot of confusion in the world. Nobody wants to feel left out. You know, some people are getting married. Some people are moving on. Some people are starting first grade. Some people are about to graduate high school or college or um, somebody could be expecting a baby or, you know, pregnant and, you know, health needs to be discussed. And it's also important that we honor the stages and phases that our family members are in. Like if you know somebody's pregnant, definitely check on them, but also make sure they're getting their rest. You know, offer them, you know, food and to help them out. If somebody's elderly, are they okay? Do they have enough water? So help each other meet each other's needs, honor each other's differences in regards to ages, needs, health, schedules. Because there's a lot of events in life that are just significant and everybody don't handle them the same is what I learned. You know, somebody getting married is a big deal and there could be a lot of emotions from different people that people never thought felt that way or somebody could be moving out the house and that's a that's huge you know that empty nest syndrome you know parents go through some people really struggle with that they need to speak about that because when you know who's struggling with what you can be more compassionate and supportive and caring and call more and text more and just hey you doing okay Sometimes people need that or that note in the mail or yeah, I moved out, but I'll see you in a week or I'm moving States, but we're coming down there for Christmas or whatever. Like people need to hear that. We got to love and support each other far better than what's being done in this world right now. And for everybody who's doing it right, God bless you. Keep going. Keep being the example. We need that. We need you. Families need to compliment, commend and reward each other. With gifts, encouragement, thank you notes, bless each other, milestones, they come here and there, you know, bless each other, be a blessing, love each other, compliment each other when people do something right or well. That means a lot. Even if people don't smile on the outside, they're smiling on the inside. It's about soul building. We need more people to be uplifted 
and achieve a very encouraged spirit. We gotta encourage each other, be more caring and more loving and come from the heart space more. This is a big one. People have to learn to apologize and truly change. Embracing change is major and significant in this world. I cannot stress this enough. People have to learn to take accountability and responsibility for their actions. Even sometimes when they're not wrong because you may not feel like you've done something wrong but you don't want your loved one hurting. You may say, I'm sorry that you feel that way. What can I do to make this right or to make you feel better? People have to step up and apologize. They have to and mean it because nobody's going to believe somebody who apologizes a thousand times, but they keep doing the same thing without getting help or without using a different strategy or tactic or improve. You have to improve. It's apologize and improve. That's what it is. Words are not bond until people show that they have improved, that they mean it. It has to be heartfelt. It can't only be heartfelt and then the behavior stays the same. Behaviorisms, mannerisms, behaviors have to change for the better. People have to see it. And people definitely have to give people their space. Um, sometimes people just need to rest. They need to relax. They need to listen to their music. They need to take extra long hot bubble bath. Give people their space. We all need space sometimes. We all need to heal. We got to respect each other's privacy. You know, parents definitely use your intuition. It's okay to check up on your children. You guys already know what it is. In today's world, you have to check up on your children and know what's going on. So that's a, you know, that's something you definitely have to talk to God about, about Definitely using your discernment at all times and being a parent, you know, that balance of being a parent versus giving them more space and more privacy. They need to know that you're still their parent first. Check on those social medias, check in what's going on. And the more you communicate with your children, I definitely talk to my daughter a lot. She oftentimes shares a lot of things with me. So kids will share a lot with you when you share with them and they feel safe and comfortable to do it. We may not always like the way their friends talk and they're rough, but remember we were all once teenagers too. Check who you need to check, but just remember to put yourself in their shoes too. But stay on it in regards to parenting. Let them know you're still boss. And they still have to honor you because it says in the Bible, honor your parents, your days will be long, something to that effect. So remind your, your kids that you're still their parent first, not their friend first. You're their best supporter, their best cheerleader, but you are their parent first. You have to do what's right for them, even when they don't understand it, even when they don't see it. You can explain it. That's good to the best of your ability. But as a parent, you have to make sure they understand that, that they know that, and to honor and respect you in your position, and that you honor, love, and respect them in their position, and that just because they are your children, they still have to listen, but their voice still matters. What they have to say is important, and you do want to hear them. Families in this world definitely need to get along better with each other. We all play a significant role as being role models. We all need to put more love and light and care into this world. And we can do it. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our kids. We owe it to our families. And most importantly, we owe it to God and Jesus and our entire spiritual teams to be our best selves. I will always say that. I will always believe that. I will always feel it. And I will always know that. Keep spreading love and light, you guys. And I hope this life coaching session number 23 is beneficial to somebody, to all of you, or as many of you as humanly possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you. And have an awesome Easter and enjoy your family structures and give people their flowers and roses and love while you are here and while they are here. Give people what they deserve. 
because life is short no matter how many years we live time goes by fast i feel like it's getting faster and faster by the day love god love each other love your families thank you guys so much for watching god bless you guys bye y'all